Hey, it's Andrew with WineGrapeStracks.com, and today I'm going to show you guys how to use a bucket press. And using a bucket press is fairly easy, and all it consists of is mainly buckets. And if you're buying frozen grape nuts, you're going to have a lot of buckets. So now let's take a look at what a bucket press consists of. And the first thing you're going to need is one bucket beneath the press to collect your wine. And then you're going to need a bucket uh, with a lid on it. And that's so you can sit here and use this bucket to press down on the grapes. And it's a lot easier to use your own body weight. Um, so if you have any large friends, invite them over for this because you might get a better press. So use, you know, your force to press down on the grapes with your arms. And you guys are going to see all that. Um, so this part goes in right here. And then you're going to need is what's commonly referred to as a brewer's bag. Now this is what you put the grape must into and it'll stop you know any of the mechanisms from getting clogged up by free grapes. Uh, and you can also use this bag to squeeze the grape must and finish it off. And so now the most important part that you need is a bucket with just a lot of holes in it. Just drill them. Um, and so you can see here that pretty much you just sit down with a small drill bit. Not, don't make the holes too big because then particulate and grapes can get through and you don't want that. You just want it just big enough to give you a good flow. And just put a ton of holes in there from top to bottom. Okay, now you guys should come in. If you take a look inside, you'll see a bunch of barrel plugs here. And you know, this is just my personal touch onto the bucket press. And the reason you want these in there is so that, um, you know, it allows more flow of the juice when you're pressing it out. Uh, so you have a pathway for the juice to get out if you put these in here. Another key component is to have a bucket with a spout. And so all of the wine is going to come out, it's going to build up here and come pouring out the spout. Um, and what's nice is that this gives you a controlled flow, so you can turn it off and on, and it juts out a little bit so that you can get into your bucket beneath to catch the wine. And the final thing you're going to need is just a raised platform so that this bucket can be above this bucket. And, you know, that's a fairly simple thing that you can find depending on your situation. Um, and I just happen to have one uh, right outside. Great, so now we're gonna put it all together. And so first on the bottom is your bucket with a spigot. Now goes your bucket with holes and barrel plugs. And then you're gonna put in your brewer's bag. What you should do is fold it around the edges here. And then this way, when you pour in the grape must, um, it's all going to get captured within the bag. So now, at this point, you're going to pour in the grape mus, and then close the bag from the top so none of the grape skins can get out. And if you don't have a drawstring, just use a rubber band like this to tie a knot at the top. So here's the final part of the bucket press. And surprisingly, it's a bucket. And you simply put it on top of here and apply pressure to force the juice out of the grape skins. So as you can see here, there's a cap. And before you go ahead and pour this in, make sure you break this all up so that the grape skins are evenly distributed. Otherwise, the cap could come out all at once and topple your bucket and spill some wine. So to break it up, I just use my hands, but yeah, you guys can use whatever you want. There we go, cap broken. So now you pour in the grape moss. Get it all in there. So now the grape moss is in the brewer's bag. And I went ahead and did uh, three gallons just because I'm impatient. And now you just twist it up at the top and you get the rubber band over it 
and you just rubber band it like you would anything. Great, and so that is now secure. And I'm gonna put this bucket in here and we're gonna begin pressing off. Now we're gonna press down and you should probably just start with your arms here and lower the bucket onto the grate mask and out it comes. Now it's time to sit on your bucket. And it, again, this is it's just this simple, this easy. Here we have a lot of free run, um, and when the wine is running free, in my opinion, it's time to take a break and to take a taste. So let's just see what's going on with this Pinot Noir for Vineyard 2013. And if you make a lot of Pinot, you know Pinots are very gamey initially, um, especially this one. There's a lot of Pinot varietal expression, um, which of course changes and softens over time through the barrel, through the bottle. You know, Pinot Noir is like an immature teenager or something. You know, it settles out later, even if it's super problematic initially. Let's take a taste. But right, like this, it's a very round, great acidity, um, and that typical uh, Pinot Noir varietal expression, you know, the spiciness, the earthiness, what you look for in a Pinot Noir. So this bucket is partially see-through, and you can actually see the wine when I press down, it's going to come out the little holes in the grape press, and come down here, and then out the spout. Let's take a look. So we're now at the point where there's just a trickle coming out and one way that we can increase the flow is to uh, take out this main pressing bucket and use your hands to create more space uh, amongst the grape must because you see um, it's now pretty much compacted down and if you free it up some uh, you can apply pressure again and get more juice out. Take the rubber band off, like so. Set that aside. And then reach into your bag and you'll notice that it's highly compact. Very, very compact. And you just want to free it all up again. Free it all up so that you can squeeze it once more. Mm. And there we go, just really dig in there. Of course, I uh, hope you didn't expect to have clean hands doing this. So now we've created some space in the grate nest again, and I'm going to press down once more. And you can see that it's helped increase the flow. Again, the bucket press is not 100% efficient. And after you press down a few times, Go ahead and squeeze the brewer's bag with your hands to get the rest of the juice out. You can see there's sometimes still quite a bit of juice in there. So we're finally done. And we pressed off about 6.3 gallons with two pails of Pinot Noir. And so that's a pretty decent yield considering all we use to press off this a uh, great must was a bucket press. Of course, you get even higher yields with a more efficient bladder press. Um, yeah, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to put this wine up at a high place so that we can let it settle out and then use gravity to rack it into a glass carboy. <laughs>